Herbicide costs have been slashed by more than 75% for Noangarup farmer Knud Neiman, thanks to the adoption of spot spraying technology. Mr Neiman crops about 11,000 hectares a year in Western Australia's Great Southern Region, making weed control a constant task. And with the shift in weather patterns delivering more summer rain, his weed it system has fitted perfectly with the need to spray out summer fallows ahead of autumn planting. And like in a lot of cases we've been running at, you know, from anywhere down to 5% sprayed and in some cases a lot higher but I think our sort of average has been sort of in the low teens so in other words uh, you spray 100, 100 hectares with a machine and then you use chemicals on 13. The, um, the savings are fairly significant but and that's another reason why this this machine's come around is um, you know get more summer rain more summer weeds so that's really where it shows its, its strength. Mr Neiman has noticed resistance developing to some chemical groups in both ryegrass and wild radish which also influenced the thinking behind the investment. By reducing herbicide volumes, he can afford the option of purchasing more expensive chemicals for use in his rotation. Ryegrass and, and radish has got some resistance to, you know, particularly so I guess the SUs and also a lot of the FOPs and DIMs. We think Select's still working somewhat. And Roundup, uh, we don't have any sort of particularly sightings of resistance, but it is something that we are trying to be on the forefoot with. We still the 240D from Opsis and stuff still working on a radish, but yeah. Every time you spray, you obviously select and leave a few behind, and that's, it comes around. The deer of the brew, which in a lot of cases, that cost has come up with the flea bane and some of the harder kill weeds, you know, $20 a hectare or better. Uh, the savings are fairly significant. The Grains Research and Development Corporation has been supporting research to optimise the performance of weed detection systems through better understanding of chemical and water rates, optimal sensor height, speed and nozzles. Mr Neiman says calibration of the technology is reasonably straightforward, but putting the machinery into effective use does require a change of mindset and an understanding of its limitations. With the detector you sort of wait for the germination and then you probably wait a little bit on to do. You've got to have like a 50 set size weed to be able for, for the, um, the sensor to actually see the weed. So that's strategic thing you've got to sort of get your head around. So it depends a bit on the density as well. And you've got to have your speed right. Dust is another one you've got to watch. One, like a normal sprayer does those little whiskers and stuff, obviously this won't touch that. And there's not much calibration, so it's somewhat self-calibrating. It's uh, And it works in the dark, so that's a good thing because with the dust, usually with a dew on is when you want to be spraying in the summer.